Aloha, this is Heidi at ECPZ. In this video, I'm going to show you a cheap, easy way to cloth diaper while introducing the potty. This method of cloth diapering is great if you're practicing elimination communication with a baby. If you're new to that concept, EC is a gentle method of allowing your baby opportunities to use the potty. This also works great if you're just starting the potty learning journey with your toddler, but you're not quite ready to let them go bare bottom and risk having puddles on the floor. I like to refer to this style of cloth diapering as diaper belt and pre-fold method. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you a whole range of items that can be used for this cloth diapering method, ranging from things you can find around your house to items you can sew or make without any sewing required, all the way up to items that you can purchase online. Some of the benefits of using a diaper belt and pre-fold are that the baby can feel when they pee and they can start connecting that wetness with realizing that they need to eliminate. Also, the parent can see immediately when the pre-fold is wet so they can offer the potty and change into a clean dry one. Even if your baby peed a little bit in their backup, chances are they're still gonna need to pee some more. And the setup makes it super easy to offer the potty without any snaps to get in the way. This style of cloth diapering works well during the day when you have a chance to pay close attention to your child and watch for their signals. Maybe you're watching for that poop face so you can put them on the potty. And it's not something that you have to do all the time, every day. You can also have another option of using a waterproof cover over the prefold or the absorbent layer for times like naps, nighttime outings, or maybe when you're just too busy to pay attention to your baby's signals and offer the potty. So I will also be showing you four options ranging from do-it-yourself up to store-bought options of what you can use for waterproof covers. This method of cloth diapering is ideal for those who want to learn their child's elimination patterns, figure out how often, what times of day their baby tends to pee and poop and to respond quickly to those eliminations. So the pre-fold or absorbent layer should be changed immediately when the child is either wet or poopy. I refer to this diapering method as diaper belt and prefold, but there are many variations as I will show you in this video. Let's start with some of the options you could use as the diaper belt. You could purchase an actual diaper belt. You could sew your own. At the very end of this video, I will include a tutorial that shows how to make this basic diaper belt. This is made with wool. A big benefit of wool is if you lanolize it, then the lanolin neutralizes any pee that gets on it and also wool repels liquid. So if the baby were to pee and the pee seeps up the prefold a little bit and touches the wool diaper belt, that's okay. You can just keep on reusing that wool diaper belt. If it feels damp to the touch, you can air it out for a bit. If you choose a diaper belt that's made out of cotton and that gets wet, you're gonna need to throw it in the wash. So you might wanna have about four times as many cotton diaper belts as you could get away with just one wool diaper belt. A super simple do-it-yourself option is to just take a piece of elastic, measure how long it needs to be to fit around your baby's waist, and then just tie a knot in it so that they can wear that like a diaper belt. This style of elastic I have here is called fold-over elastic, and it's intended to be used around the legs on cloth diapers. But because of that, one side is super soft that's intended to touch the baby's skin. So I think because of that, it's a good option to use since part of the diaper belt will be touching your baby. And it also comes in really cute colors. Another super cute option is to use a baby headband and then just try that around your baby's waist and see if it's the right size to fit their waist. I will also link below some headbands that are available on Amazon that untie so you could tie it so it's the right amount to fit around your baby's waist. Another option for the diaper belt is if your child has a pair of pants or shorts that are really messed up, maybe there's holes in the knees, they're falling apart, you could cut off the waistband. Be sure to cut it below the stitching because you want to leave on those stitches, you want to leave this nice fabric encasing around the elastic. This is a cute little ruffle diaper belt, but if you have one that's basically just a band, that's perfectly fine too. So I have the prefold cloth diaper tucked up in front and tucked under in the back too, but fanned out a little bit for better containment. This is absorbent, but it's not waterproof. So I have her laying on a waterproof wool puddle pad here. Or if you have any kind of waterproof picnic blanket, you can have them on. 
If they're a toddler and walking around, then that'll be okay too, but you don't want any clothes touching this. When your baby is wearing a diaper belt and prefold, you can add some warmth by allowing them to wear a t-shirt, something that just ends at the waist so it won't get wet. And you can add long socks. These are merino wool lamington socks, rock thigh baby socks, which come up to the thighs. If you're really tight on budget, you could even just take a pair of adult socks and have your little one wear them and they'll come up high on your baby. Now we'll talk about other options that you can use in place of the prefold for absorbency. You could use a flat cloth diaper or you could use pretty much anything that's 100% cotton and can absorb. Throughout this video, I'm going to be using the terms tri-folding and pad folding. Those are the two easiest ways to fold cloth diapers. With a pre-fold, it's made with more absorbent layers down the middle and fewer absorbent layers on the side. It's already kind of divided into thirds, so it's super simple to tri-fold. Just means folding in three. You just want to end up with this rectangular shape. For a pad fold, that's usually the term that's used when you're using a flat cloth diaper or something that's square shape, and it just means to fold it into a long rectangle. You're just trying to make what we'll be using as the diaper insert. So don't get confused by the terminology. Pad folding just means fold it into a rectangle, just like this. If you're in a pinch, you don't have the time or the money to buy actual pre-fold cloth diapers, you can just look around your house for absorbent things. I like to find something that's 100% cotton because you'll have less issues with that. It'll be easy to hand wash it. For instance, if you need to hand wash in a bucket and plunger because you don't have a washing machine at home, this is a sheet that has been cut and oh, stitched mommy. on the side, but you could even, even take just a flannel pillowcase still as the pillowcase and fold it up into a rectangle pad fold and use that along with your diaper belt. You could use baby washcloths as wipes, just wet them with water or rinse your baby first in the sink and then just pat them dry with the wipe and then you won't need very many cloth wipes. You could even cut up a flannel sheet into squares and if you have a sewing machine, you could finish it on the edge or do it yourself cloth wipes. You could use your old high school t-shirt that you no longer wear and fold that right up. Like I said, if you wanna make it more comfortable, you could cut off the neckline and cut off the sleeves, but even just, oh, and I would turn it inside out. You don't really want the scratchy print, so I would flip the t-shirt inside out and then fold it. Swaddle blankets, receiving blankets are great. This is a flannel cotton one, and so it'll be soft on baby. If it's about a square shape, you could do the fancy different flat folds with it, or again, you can just pad fold it keep it super simple. Muslin swaddle blankets are almost the exact same thing as muslin flats, so those work great as well. Terry cloth towels, I would stick with natural fibers like cotton. If you find a towel that's something like microfiber, then you don't want that against your baby's skin. You would need to put some kind of cotton over it to line it. If you have something made out of bamboo rayon, bamboo viscose, those could work, but I think they might be a little bit harder to wash and dry. These cotton items will be easy to wash with your regular laundry detergent. And if you're hand washing them in a bucket and plunger, it will just take a small amount of laundry detergent. Now we're gonna talk about four options of waterproof diaper covers you could use for times when you want to have a waterproof cover over the absorbency. The first most simple one is a rectangle. Then I'm gonna show you a no-sew diaper cover, a wrap cover, and a wool soaker. This is a really old towel here, and I can just fold it into thirds, fold it down to the right length, and then use this sumo style with the diaper belt on her. But if I do want something waterproof, like maybe she's gonna be sitting on the couch, or I just don't want a big mess on the floor, all I did was cut a rectangle of wool Super simple, I cut it just a little bit wider, maybe an inch wider than the insert I was going to use with it. So I just tucked it up under the diaper belt in the back. This would work great if you were pairing it also with a wool diaper belt. This is not gonna be as great containment as using a regular shaped diaper cover that has snaps or Velcro closure, but it can give you just a basic level of protection so that wherever their bottom is sitting, the wetness doesn't leak straight through from the pre-fold onto what they're sitting on. 
For something similar, if you'd like to purchase ready-made, you can check out the rectangles from EC Wear online. If you want a more refined pattern, like with elastic around the legs and where it kind of attaches onto a diaper belt, I will link below the sewing pattern that Little Bunny Bear offers for a drop flap wool diaper cover. It's a more refined version than this. One option for waterproof cover is a do-it-yourself, no-sew fleece cover. It's usually recommended to make these out of polyester polar fleece, but I'm all about natural fabrics, so wool also has the amazing properties, especially if you lanolize it, so you can use an actual wool blanket or wool sweater. And as you saw, all this does is just ties around. I will link below some tutorials to make your own no-sew covers like this. Inside, I've got her little wool liner. So for example, if this was at night and we didn't want baby feeling too wet, the pee would go through this to the absorbent layer. I just watched a tutorial, looked at a blog post real quick and just cut this out in about five minutes. So I'll link some below so you can get a better idea of what shape to make it but it is super simple. You can make it really quick. If you're gonna use wool, make sure it's already been felted. So that means washing it on warm or hot so it shrinks up, the fibers get tighter, and it's gonna be thicker once it's felted. For a wool diaper cover to get all the benefits, you're gonna wanna wash it with a wool wash and then lanolize it. The lanolin oil is what gives it the waterproofing. Kerosene U is a great option for all wool wash products, but if you don't have that, if you're a breastfeeding mom and you have some lanolin, lanolin on hand, like you use for nipple cream, you can go ahead and use that to lanolize your wool cover. So you may want to use a waterproof cover over the prefold. So one that's made out of either polyester or wool. It may have Velcro closure or snaps. This is a doll diaper. It's just cotton. It's not waterproof. It's just for an example. The easiest way with a prefold is just to tri-fold it, which means just fold it in thirds. If it's a little bit too long you can fold it down and then we would just put this on our baby make sure all the absorbent material is contained under the cover so nothing leaks out i will link some places where you can buy waterproof diaper covers now if you want to get a little more fancy you can fasten the prefold onto your baby so fan it out a little bit on the back line it up about their belly button. I'm going to jelly roll the legs in a little bit to make it narrower. And it needs to be folded down for this baby. And then you bring these wings around to the front and you would either pin it here with diaper pins or use a snappy fastener, which has three arms, one side, one side in here. I'm sorry that I don't have pins or a snappy to show this with. But you can get an idea that if you want it more secure, better poop containment, better around the legs, then you can actually fasten this prefold onto your baby before, of course, putting on the cover. Here she is ready for bed with a wool soaker. This is one that I purchased from Truly Karis, but I will include a link to a do-it-yourself sewing pattern. So this is the waterproof cover on the outside. Underneath, she's wearing a flat diaper. If you've been pad folding flats during the day, but you want better containment for naps or outings, you can go ahead and fold the flat diaper around your baby. I'm not an expert at this. You can Google for different um, flat diaper folds. There's a whole bunch of ones. And then again, you'd normally secure it with diaper pins or a snappy. I just have an elastic band here because that's what I had on hand. This is actually a muslin swaddle blanket. That's a square. It's very similar to if you were to purchase a square muslin flat. And sometimes since the absorbency is all distributed. It might not be enough to just have the flat. So what you can do is pad fold another insert underneath it for a thicker absorbency. So what I have here is just an old t-shirt of mine. Which type of waterproof diaper cover you use will determine how you can have that absorbency underneath the diaper cover. So for example, with the rectangle that was simply a rectangle of waterproof fabric, your option there is going to be to pad fold if you're using the do-it-yourself no-sew diaper cover, you have the option to either pad fold under that or you could secure the diaper around your baby first using pins, snappy, or a diaper belt. If you're using a wrap cover, that also gives you the option of either pad folding or securing the diaper onto your baby. And if you're using a wool soaker that you pull up, the only real option there that's going to have some containment 
is to secure the diaper to your baby first. I want to give you an example of how you could put together a cloth diaper stash. It could range anywhere from zero dollars costing you nothing up to hundred and sixty dollars. So for a no spend diaper stash you could use items you already own. An example is using a fabric headband as the diaper belt, using hand towels as the absorbency, and using a fleece blanket, either wool or polar fleece, which is polyester, that you cut up to use as the waterproof covers. I also came up with an example that would cost $160 if you purchase it new, but you can keep in mind that there are a lot of groups online for buying used cloth diapers. I will link a few of my favorites below. I'm personally saying that this stash could last you from about three months old up to a year old, but it depends on the size of your baby. The flat diapers that I recommend could fit from newborn up to potty training, although I prefer half flats for a newborn. But the particular covers that I recommend are sized, so these covers would fit in the range of approximately 14 to 24 pounds. If you want, instead you could choose what's called one size covers, and those would fit for a bigger weight range, but again, even those covers probably wouldn't fit an itty bitty newborn. You can get almost everything from greenmountaindiapers.com, the 24 organic flat diapers, three of the cloth bees wrap covers, one of the baby greens classic wool covers, 12 organic cotton muslin wipes, and one free pair of diaper pins, or you could pay $1 for better closure pins. And that's coming out to about $145. You could include the washing guide as well. And this should qualify for free shipping since it's over $50. You can get a wool diaper belt directly from the Baby Greens website. I wish that Green Mountain Diapers carried these so it'd be a one-stop shop for everything. Here we have for $12, you can choose either size small, fits waist 14 to 20 inches, or size large, fits 18 inches to 26 inches. Those are both the same price. Also, if you're shopping on Baby Greens, there's more options for the diaper covers. They do upcycled ones with different colors on them. So if you prefer colored instead of just the natural wool, there'll be more options for their side snapping classic covers directly on their website. I'm going to show you real quick how I made this simple diaper belt. This is not refined or polished, but something you could make super quick if you're in a pinch or an emergency situation. If you're going to be sewing your own diaper belt, keep in mind that it's basically just a big hair scrunchie. So if you're like me, you may have made these as a kid back in the 90s to wear in your hair. You're just going to be making an extra large hair scrunchie. First, you can wrap the elastic around your baby's waist while they're wearing a tri-folded pre-fold and then have it so that the elastic overlaps by one inch so that you'll be able to sew it together later. For this example, I used one inch wide elastic since that's what I had on hand and I cut it at about 14 inches long and that's just based on my baby doll's waist size. It'll be different depending on your child's size. Also, I cut a piece of wool blanket 4 inches by 24 inches. You want your piece of fabric to be longer than your piece of elastic so it'll end up scrunched up like a hair scrunchie when it's finished. Fold the wool or other fabric in half lengthwise right sides together. That means if you're using cotton fabric and it has a print on it, you want the pretty print to be inside right now because that's going to end up on the outside later. If you have pins, go ahead and pin it in place. If you don't, don't worry about that. Now you're going to want to stitch the tube closed about a quarter inch away from the edge. If you have a sewing machine, you can use a zigzag stitch. If you have a serger, that'll do a really nice job finishing it off and cutting off the excess fabric. I went ahead and I just hand stitched it really fast. If you do this option, try to make your stitches neater and tighter together than I did. Now that the tube is sewn shut, you're going to want to flip it right side out. To do this, I used a colored pencil. I used the blunt end of the pencil to start pushing one end of the wool into the tube and then just scrunching that wool up towards my hand towards the tip of the pencil trying to flip the tube inside out. You can see on step three how now I've got part of my wool tube coming through 
and I'm still flipping over half of it. By the end of this step, you'll have your whole tube flipped so the right side, if you're using printed fabric, the pretty print will be on the outside now. Now to insert the elastic, pin the elastic to one end of the tube. If you don't do that, the elastic is just going to come out the other end and you'll have to start over again. Then you can use a pen to pass the elastic through the tube. What I did is I pinned one end of the elastic to the tube and the other end of the elastic I tied onto a pen. Then I started pushing the pen through, filling with my hand where the pen was inside the tube. Pulled the pen out the other end so that I got my two ends of elastic. Overlapped them by one inch and pinned that in place. Now with the overlapped elastic, I sewed it together. First, I like to sew a square shape. And then what I didn't show in this picture is after the square, I like to sew an X going through the middle of the square. So that will hold the elastic really solidly in place. Another option is instead of cutting the elastic just the right size and sewing it, you could use an extra long piece of elastic that allows you just to tie the two ends together at this point. And then don't sew the diaper belt closed. And when your baby grows some, you could untie that knot of elastic, tie it at a little bit looser point, and keep using the diaper belt. The next step is to close the tube. You could either just slide one end of the fabric over the other end and leave it like that. That's what I did. Or optionally, you could sew it shut right there. And you have a finished diaper belt. In case you're watching this video at some time in the distant future, it's currently April of 2020 and the world is experiencing the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Some people who normally use disposable diapers aren't able to access them right now, maybe either because of finances from losing their jobs or just that the stores in their area are completely out of stock of baby diapers and wipes. So that's the main reason I put this video together right now, not just for my easy peasy followers who are interested in illumination communication, but also for those of you who are really struggling right now to figure out how to keep your baby diapered. There are options, there are things you can find in your home that you can use as diaper. Even if you don't have a washer and dryer, you could hand wash items using a five gallon plastic bucket and a toilet plunger, a little bit of detergent, and you could hang dry them overnight. So no, there are things you can do. You don't necessarily need to have sewing skills. A pair of scissors and a polar fleece blanket might be all you need to make a diaper cover. I really hope that this video can help at least someone out there. If it helped you, please let me know in the comments below and share it with anybody else you think could benefit.